Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for my client Saif's vlog. Uh, the first part of our week went very good. I was very happy with it. We weren't happy with deadlift day, uh, but that has to do with some uh, stress he's dealing with in his life, some sleep problems the last couple days, and of course he made the mistake of for some reason trying to go beltless on the deadlift without asking coach if it would be a good idea first. But let's talk about the positive. Uh, six reps on a 90% week on the safety bar squat. Same thing on bench. All right, so we're, we're getting real respectable. We're getting very respectable on this safety bar. All right, absolutely. So, uh, super happy with this. Of course, we're using more of his specialty bars for uh, assistance type work, or in this case, he's using a straight bar. Now, this again is not my preference as a coach i want to be clear on that uh people or you know have asked you know why are you uh, having him do this uh, i'm not he insists that he really 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 has a certain safety bar number he wants to hit before he starts worrying about the straight bar uh, he used to not be able to do the straight bar uh, without pain but we've got him into a situation to where he can so he's at least doing it for his assistance work but he set a goal a very very lofty goal for the safety bar uh, and you know i'm rolling with it as a coach uh, but realistically yeah I, I could probably put more weight on the bar you know if we went over to uh, straight bar for his main sets but that's okay all right we do after the uh, assistance squatting we do belt squats he does belt squats and then he does uh, some rowing. Now, for some people who, who are curious why we're rowing on his lower type days, mainly because he only has one pressing day a week, and it has to do with just his recovery, his schedule, everything else. And so therefore, I don't want to clutter his pressing uh, with extra upper and middle back work. Right? We don't, we don't need to do that, particularly with someone who has a very physically demanding job, uh, who we have to deload frequently, we have to limit to three days a week for training. So I've got to be very careful where I play stuff and to make sure that we're, we're really getting enough training volume in one day for all his pressing muscles. I'm focusing almost exclusively on pressing muscles on that day. So we do the rowing itself. Uh, we're doing all his rowing on his squat day and his deadlift day. Okay. And, that, and that also makes sense because we're going to be technical uh, those are really critical support muscles for the squat and the deadlift, right? They really are. And and it's one of the things that people forget. You know, some people are like, well, I struggle to really grow my lower body with squats. Well, it's often a week back that's the, the, the situation there that's to blame. It's a massive factor. Because if your back is actually limiting your squats, and of course your legs are going to struggle to go from squatting. Just something to think about, but notice that I don't have any of my lifters who really, really need the extra lower body development. Notice that we do different movements, right? We do belt squats, leg presses, things like that. You guys have seen plenty of my clients do those things. Or we just focus really hard on posterior chain work outside of the squatting because it might be what they need. You know, particularly if they do a lot of sled drags and stuff, then I don't really care so much. Uh, but in his case, in Saif's case, we don't have that. So on the benching, though, we got for the 90% plus set, he got six reps. But he notices still that ton of bicep inflammation. And we want to be clear that's work-related. There's nothing I can do about that. Like, as his coach, I can't do anything further uh, to help with that. We do some band work to help with the tendons. We, we limit his pulling in general for the biceps every single week uh, be, but his job is physically demanding on it and I can't remove that factor so all we can do is just not train them for the most part uh, we have to minimize stress on it uh, in the gym but notice that we use the two different specialty bars and I'm going to have him next week go over to doing the football bar for the most part for his benching and that will relieve the extra stress that he's having on his bicep all right, deadlifts, this is where we ran into problems this week because we did great on benching and squatting. Like, we were happy with the, the numbers this week. All right, he was fatigued, running on no minimal sleep, 
And then he said, I messed up. I, I didn't even consult you. I just went with no belt because I thought I'll just be strong and not use a belt. And he, he couldn't lift the weight. This should have been a minimum of three reps. Um, he just couldn't pull it. Although I have talked to him, I'm like, if you're going to use straps for your plus sets, you can't hang out at the bottom. Right? You've got to learn to set up quickly and drop into it tight. You can't put the straps on in your pull position. You can't do it. We're bleeding energy. But on top of that, no belt, the lack of sleep, just a bad day for his deadlifting. So we went ahead and finished up the supplemental work. And in this case, we got our good mornings in, which I'm having him slowly work up. We're working on these. And I've told him, you know, good mornings are going to be a big deal for you at this point. They're going to be a big deal because his quads and everything are massive. Right? It's a lot of posterior chain uh, needs additional work to bring his deadlift up, and even to some extent his squat. Right? So I've got him doing good mornings, which he used to not be able to do. They used to be extremely painful. We've worked on some things to correct that. Now he can do them. He's having to start light, and we're going to build up. But you guys see how strong I am on these. You guys have seen how strong some of my lifters are. I've put up clips of lifters of mine doing 500 plus pounds on good mornings. It's not just me who does that. I have clients who do it. I got a guy right now who can do 10 reps with 405. Okay, 10 reps with 405. But he's got a monstrous deadlift on top of that. And he should. You would expect that. You would expect that by default. Even a person who's never deadlifted in their life, as long as they can grip it and they've done some grip work, who can do that? You would expect a monstrous deadlift. Their first day trying it. Okay. So we're working the good mornings. And because we've dealt dealing with a lot of fatigue and as fatigue accumulates and we have to deload so often, we've kind of cut the deadlift volume out and I want to focus on easier to recover from movement. So in this case, what are we doing? We're going to work on good mornings. We're going to work on back extensions, right? Which he's getting stronger on these back extensions. And I want you guys to note, you know, kind of where that weak link was on that deadlift. You know, as he popped it off the floor fast still, does that tell you quads are not an issue? Right. So we've got to work those hamstrings more. All right. Got to work those hamstrings in the low back. That's what's limiting him on the deadlift. And we're doing that right here. Of course, then we do some seal rows, and then I have him finish off. And he does his, his banded curls just to help with that bicep uh, tendon inflammation, get blood flow to the area. So we finish uh, the week off with those every time. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.